Among the myriad of forecasts that we issue on a regular basis for weather world, short, medium, and long range, the most sought after is our winter outlook. We're honed in on the months December through February and what that could bring for Pennsylvania in terms of temperature, precipitation, and snowfall. Of course, making any seasonal outlook requires a team effort. That's why I'm pleased to bring in our very own Dr. John Neese. And we're also joined by the Pennsylvania State climatologist, Kyle Imhoff. Kyle, we'll begin with you tonight. Could you give us a perspective on how we uh, shaped up last winter in terms of temperature, precipitation, and snowfall, and then set that benchmark for us on what an average snowfall season looks like in Pennsylvania? Sure, Rob. So last winter will be remembered for how mild it was across the entirety of the season, but we did have a brief cold snap right around the holidays. So if we start looking at departure from normal temperatures for the entirety of the season, meteorological winter, December through February, much of the state was above average between four and six degrees, which ended up tying for the third warmest statewide um, for the winter season. Shifting gears to precipitation, a bit of a different story. We are much closer to average within 10% um, for much of the state close to the normal level. So um, very seasonal in terms of precipitation, which ends up being around nine to nine and a half inches statewide for December through February. Now snowfall was a very different story. You can see here the departure from normal snowfall that shows the, the lack of snowfall, particularly across the western snow belts, the lake effect snow belts near the lake shore, as well as the higher terrain where you were 20 to 50 inches below average for the entirety of the winter season. When you look at the percent of snowfall map here, this shows the lack of snowfall across southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, that really pops out here, the fact that there was almost no snow when you head towards the southeast coastal plain and the city of Philadelphia specifically. Now, when it comes to measuring the baseline of how much snow we do typically get during the winter season, you can see what really shows up here is the influence of lake effect snow with upwards of 100 to 150 inches of snow across the, the lake shore as well as the higher terrain. And then once you get into the, the flatter terrain in southeastern Pennsylvania, 20 to 40 inches of snow is pretty typical for the December through February period. Back to you, Rob. Thanks, Kyle. It's always good to get that benchmark for what an average snowfall season looks like in Pennsylvania, but also a good reminder of what it was like last winter here in the Keystone State. Now let's bring in John Neese. John, what are some of the primary analogs and factors that will play a role in this season's uh, outlook? Yeah, Rob, as much chatter as there is this time of year with woolly bear caterpillars and the volume of nuts falling off of trees as being predictors of the winter to come. We're going to stick with what we think is the primary driver of this winter's forecast, and that is the presence of a strong El Nino. Now, reminding you the definition of an El Nino, this fingerprint right here of warmer than average waters in the eastern and central tropical Pacific is the fingerprint of El Nino. It's expected to continue. Uh, at strong capacity through the winter, and that has the impact of moving the jet streams over North America. The subtropical jet stream becomes more active. Disturbances can sometimes come up the coast. And the polar jet stream, the one that typically affects the lower 48 during the winter, is nudged a little bit farther north, and sometimes this warmth can ooze into Pennsylvania. We took a look at the last two strong El Ninos and asked the question, what have those winters ended up like? So using the last two, we see a pattern of above average temperatures, several degrees in Pennsylvania, in fact, two to six degrees, if we composite together the last two strong El Ninos and ask what was the impact on winter in Pennsylvania. As far as precipitation goes here, the blues, indicate above average precipitation, so a fairly consistent signal that we might want to go above average in terms of precipitation in Pennsylvania. But how much will fall as snow? Well, if we composite together all of the El Nino winters and just look at January through March, see this brown here? That indicates that most of Pennsylvania, particularly western parts, have tended to have below average snowfall in an El Nino winter, largely because it's a little bit too warm for snow. So we think that's the driving factor for this winter's outlook. Rob, I know you want to show some of the computer model output that could help us. Thanks, John. And it's worth noting that these forecast models I'm about to show also know that there's an El Nino and they're accounting for that as we look ahead in time. We'll begin with the NMME model tonight. This is the North American Multi-Model Ensemble, and much in the same way that we show you ensemble products as part of our Week 2 Trend segment each week on the show. This is also a mean probabilistic solution, in this case of 79 equally weighted models for the three-month period, December, January, and February, compared to that 1991 to 2020 average period. And you can see the oranges in Pennsylvania indicate a 50 to 60% chance 
of seeing above average temperatures. Interesting to note that the individual month breakdown here particularly highlights warmth in the month of December. For precipitation, that 40 to 60 percent range is showing up in eastern Pennsylvania, but you can really see that wet signal in Florida stretching up the east coast, highlighting that coastal storm potential this season, and also kind of mirroring what John showed you in his El Nino analogs earlier. A different model perspective is the ECMWF seasonal forecast. This European model, I believe, is an ensemble product of about 50 different model members. It has a slight warm signal, mainly to our north, but you can really see the overlap when we take a look at precipitation, kind of mirroring what we saw in the NM ME, but also those El Nino analogs that John showed earlier. So putting all of this together, here's our winter 2023-2024 outlook. The message here, above average temperature and precipitation in Pennsylvania. For temperature, we're saying two to four degrees above average statewide, but December has the best chance to be notably warm. We do still expect some cold snaps in January and February. After all, it's winter in Pennsylvania. For precipitation, we're saying at or above average, a split take between west and east. The setup here favors wetter conditions in the east. And for snowfall, we're saying more than last winter because of that potential for more coastal storms, but likely below average in the western snow belts, we do see some impact from precipitation type challenges on snowfall in the east. It's worth noting as well that although advances have been made in seasonal forecasting, there's still a great deal of uncertainty in making these kinds of outlooks. Our confidence level this year is slightly elevated simply because of the agreement and the products that we've shown you tonight. And that is our official Weather World Winter Weather Outlook. I want to thank John Neese and Kyle Imhoff for joining us tonight, and we'll be back in just a moment with more.